Hello everyone, my name is Eko and I'm a Solutions Architect here at Elastic. Today, I will be showing you how you can get started with Elastic's observability solution to monitor your Kubernetes environment. So let's go ahead and get started. Kubernetes applications, especially those that use cloud native or microservices architectures can be pretty complex. If issues happen, it can be difficult to pinpoint the cause of the problem. With proper Kubernetes monitoring, you can see where problems happen or about to happen and access data that can help you take action to prevent or fix the issue. And with Elastic's observability solution, you can bring logs, metrics, and traces from your Kubernetes cluster and the workloads running on it into a single unified solution, which will allow you to quickly identify issues with your applications services in your Kubernetes environment. And getting started with Elastic's Kubernetes monitoring is very easy. Now let's switch to our demo environment and let me show you how. To quickly get started with Kubernetes monitoring, all you need to do is to install Elastic Agent and enable Kubernetes integrations on your integration on your server with just a couple of clicks. Currently we're looking at the Fleet UI and Fleet is a centralized management solution for your Elastic agents. When you're working with hundreds of thousands of agents, it makes it really easy to manage them all. And in this page, you can see I already enrolled Elastic agents to my Fleet server. But if you're doing this for the first time, you would start with adding an agent to, start to, um, to your Fleet server. And for that, all we need to do is to click that Add Agent button and then complete these three simple steps. So again, if you're doing this for the first time, you will need to create a new agent policy, but because I've done this already, I'm just going to select an existing policy that I have. Next, enrolling this agent to fully server, and then selecting the environment where this agent will be run. And in this case, we have, we are selecting our Kubernetes environment. And as you can see, we have our Kubernetes manifest that's just been created. And all we need to do is just download this manifest to the right directory and run the apply command. And that's it. Within a couple of minutes, we should be able to see our new agent showing up here under the Fleet server. And next, we need to navigate the integrations page and add the Kubernetes integration on top of this agent. And at this time of recording, of this recording, we have more than 300 integrations available for you. And for Kubernetes, we, all we have to do is just type Kubernetes and then add this integration to the agent. And that's it. After this, we should be able to start collecting logs and metrics from our Kubernetes environment into our Elastic platform. So once we complete that step, under the assets, we can see 15 dashboards available for us to visualize our Kubernetes data. Again, this helps us to quickly get onboarded with our Kubernetes um, monitoring within Elastic. So let's go ahead and select one of these dashboards, for example, Kubernetes overview dashboard to see what kind of metrics we can see right out of the box. Here, once I select my cluster, then I can see the breakdown view of uh, this cluster. And in this case, I can see how many pods per namespace I have, what's the CPU usage per namespace, and so on. And if I want to go a little bit deeper, maybe look into nodes or pods information, again, I can select one of these out-of-the-box dashboards and then start diving into those metrics right away. And here we can see CPU, memory, network, file system, and other important metrics for my Kubernetes environment. So dashboards via Kibana is one way to visualize our Kubernetes data once we get started with Elastic's observability. Next, let's navigate the infrastructure UI. Within Elastic observability, we have multiple ways of viewing our Kubernetes data and infrastructure is one of them. Here we have an inventory page which gives you a quick view of the overall health of your infrastructure. To get started with your analysis faster, you can change the high-level view from hosts to Kubernetes pods to Docker containers 
or AWS. And within AWS, you can see multiple integrations here, such as EC2 instances, S3 buckets, RDS databases, and so on. And when you hover each, when you hover over each of these resources, you will see the specific metrics on them. You can also filter these resources, for example, your Kubernetes pods, per namespace, per uh, node or deployment. Depending on your use case, you can easily change the um, grouping and sorting via this inventory page. And uh, from here, you can also select your metrics depending on your use case or what kind of metric you're troubleshooting, such as CPU memory, or if there is anything, uh, anything custom, you can also add those custom metrics from this um, widget as well. And next, let's say that you are um, working on a specific use case where you're looking for a specific host, right? Especially when you have an environment where you have hundreds or thousands of servers running, using the search bar uh, via the KQL, which is Kibana's query language, makes it very easy to get down to the um, you know, specific server that you're looking for. And in this case, we can easily filter down and again, if I want to hover over, I will see those specific metrics. And if I click on that, then we can, from here, we can jump into multiple different areas to continue our troubleshooting, right? If we want to look into logs, we can jump into logs UI. We can look into metrics. We can look into traces. Um, but because we are looking at metrics, let's just jump onto the pod metrics. And with that, we can see a little bit more deep dive uh, and historical trends of that uh, pod details within this UI. So going back, and another thing to mention here is that when you click on the host, you will see further details within the right panel UI here. And again, high level metrics available with logs for that specific host, the processes that running on it, and also um, the APM data, if you're also collecting your APM metrics within Elastic, will help you to quickly get down to the root cause of the issue faster. And again, with the beauty of the inventory UI, you don't have to leave this UI at all. Within just a couple of clicks, you can easily navigate to different parts of your platform. And this will help you to reduce your mean time to detection and mean time to resolution. So once we visualize our Kubernetes metrics, the very next thing that we want to do is to ensure we are more proactive for monitoring our Kubernetes environment and the workloads running on it. In Elastic's built-in anomaly detection, uh, let's you quickly enable some of the out-of-the-box anomaly detection jobs with a single click. And Elastic's anomaly detection uh, powered by the machine learning. So um, you can always create additional machine learning jobs on top of these anomaly detections as well. But with this um, quick out of the box anomaly detections, you can quickly get started again with your Kubernetes monitoring. And in this case, we have um, these out of the box anomaly detection jobs for Kubernetes pods. All we have to do is to hit this um, enable button that shows up here because I've already created, I have these recreate jobs. But so if I select that um, and then select the start date where I want these anomaly jobs to start running on and deciding how I want to partition my data. And then if there is any host or namespace, any data that I want to filter out for these anomaly jobs, just mentioning that here and hitting the enable jobs button, um, will get me uh, started with the um, anomaly detection for Kubernetes data. And that's it. It's very simple. And within one click, you're able to get started with that. And when we, once we set up the anomaly detections, the next thing we want to do is that um, we want to set up some alerts and rules. So let's walk through how easy to set up an alert within Elastic. All you have to do is give it a name to your role, add additional tags. This can be your service, services team, or your, your team names, right? 
and then decide how often you want to run this rule and then decide on the um, notification ways. And then define your conditions, thresholds, right? In this case, we are looking for a CPU metric. And let's say I would like to get alerts when my CPU passes over 90%. And I want to get a warning when my CPU passes over 75%. And that's it. It's as simple as that. And then the next thing that I will, I will need to do is that deciding on my uh, connector type, depending on your organization again, Jira, Pager, Duty Select, and uh, multiple other uh, connector types are also available within Elastic. All you have to do is just select that connector and hit the Save button, and then you will, again, quickly set up these uh, additional alerts and rules for your Kubernetes data. And having anomaly detection and additional alerting for your Kubernetes metrics will help you catch the issues before your customers do. And Elastic makes it very easy to get started. So today I showed you how to quickly get started with Elastic Kubernetes Observability. And we covered how to install Elastic Agent and enable Kubernetes integration on it, visualize Kubernetes metrics with the out-of-the-box dashboards, group and sort infrastructure metrics with the inventory page, and enable anomaly detection and create alerts and rules for your Kubernetes metrics. I hope you find this video helpful. If you would like to hear more about how to monitor your Kubernetes with Elastic Observability, please reach out to us. We can provide more in-depth demonstration and help you get started with your Elastic Observability journey. Thank you for watching.